gosh, let me explain. <laughs> you guys, <gasps> can a bagel be made with bacon grease and bacon and still be called a bagel? Can bread still be made without any grain whatsoever, egg whites, and still be called bread? Can a donut be made without any grain and still be called a donut? You guys, come back and let's talk about this because it's gonna get crazy. Yes, indeed. Hey everyone, good morning, good morning. Welcome all you new folks and welcome back everybody to Loving It On Keto Isn't. It is not exactly morning because Hedy, Harry, Hedy, 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 Harry has been in bed. And thank you so much for uh, realizing that yesterday was a replay of an older video that I did a while back, but I thought it was appropriate to share my carnivore or BBBE bacon bagels. That's an old yes, video indeed. too. Um, it's an old yeah. video. It's an older video, but you guys, it's a hundred percent carnivore and BBBE. Several questions. Yes, if you don't have the powdered egg yolks, can you add them in at the end? Yes, you can. You can even use egg whites if you don't have egg white protein powder. The mix is going to be a little different, and I have not made it with those things, so I would experiment. Now, several, I'm going to say bickering in the comments have it gone on because someone suggested that these aren't real bagels. Well, the bread we make is carnivores, the bread we make is keto, the donuts we make that are keto or carnivore, the bagels we make, the English muffins we make, the waffles we make, the chaffles we make, the pizza crust we make, all of those things have had people like myself, crazy kitchen experiments going on, so that we are mimicking the real original or not original, depending on how many thousands of years ago, like unleavened bread was, right? Were made so that we can have something that tastes, looks, feels, texture like that specific product, okay? Um, as far as I know, and reading the Bible and speaking with several uh, Jewish friends that I have, including some that now live in Israel, whether they are Jewish by birth and nationality um, and bloodline or Jewish by faith and or bloodline, being kosher, following God's laws from the Old Testament, they may or may not eat pork, okay? They may or may not eat shellfish. Is it a joke that I made bagels with bacon and bacon grease? No, it is not. Have you ever gone into Einstein Brothers or any of the bagel shops that are out there? Because let me tell you, there's hundreds of different kinds of bagels out there now that may or may not necessarily be kosher and um, acceptable to someone who is an ascetic Jew, who is a kosher Jew, who, who practices the laws of God in the Old Testament and is kosher. However, the taste, the textures, the way they look, the way they smell, the way they feel are bagels. So I just want to clear that out. You can come at me if you want to. We can debate that all day long. But um, yes, yes, it was not a joke. Those are real. I made them several months ago because Harry was in bed all day long. Can you see that I am in the kitchen today? It's because I canceled our camping trip. He is now in so much pain, he is using a cane to walk with. We've been on the phone with doctors today. He's, he stopped his physical therapy. He is now on an additional uh, gabapentin uh, that will help with the nerves that are misfiring that, that potentially could be the problem. He wants to have Harry take them for three days along with muscle relaxers, along with the pain pills to see if it helps. You mean three so, times a day? for three days, 72 hours. Oh. And yes, those are three times a day. So I want to share that with everybody. Every channel that you watch that is keto, real ketogenic, real carnivore, real ketovore and in between that is going low carb or no carb is not going to be using 
regular wheat, regular gluten, all the things that made up the SAD diet. And if you look at a lo loaf of bread, it should only have three, four, maybe five ingredients. So if you were eating a SAD diet at all, you weren't eating your bread either. Yes, there are a lot of breads out there now like the Ezekiel breads and such, but I'm just saying, even the tortillas, the egg life wraps that I, I call tortillas, because that's what I use. It looks like a tortilla. It's similar to a tortilla in taste and texture, and I can mold it and use it in enchiladas and things that I miss, right? And call it that. That's like a pizza crust with my bread. My breads are wonderful as pizza crusts. If you're a hardcore carnivore, you can make it out of chicken, ground chicken and egg. So there are lots of ways to cook the foods we want to. And I may call it um, kosher. I may not call it kosher because it's not. You're right. I use bacon, right? Use turkey bacon if you want to. Use turkey bacon grease if you want to. But those are bagels. They are the closest I have seen or done, and I've worked other people's recipes. Three tablespoons of gelatin in that mix with the high egg yolks, because bagels typically are egg, they're high in eggs. And yes, an egg wash would be great on that. I just didn't use it at the time. If I want to redo it and do uh, egg wash, yes, you can. So you guys, those are just some of the things where don't sweat the small stuff. Don't sweat the name of what it's called. It's whoever is making that recipe is, is making and satisfying something that tastes, it's like rye bread, right? Using caraway seeds in our egg white protein batter to get that rye taste. Use a little bit of coffee to get the brown marble taste of it. We're substituting carnivore, low carb, no carb foods in order to build our food base so that we can comfortably do this lifestyle. For, a, for Harry and I, this is our lifestyle and I want it to be as um, diverse as when I did the SAD diet. So I just wanna share that with everybody and thank you for those people who shared, our longtime viewers like Maria, thank you Maria, telling people that it was a replay, that it's something we did in the past because you are absolutely right, yes we did. We cut out the before and after part of it and just shared the bagel because we have a lot of new folks that are carnivore, that are ketovore or BBB centric and we wanted to share something they could do for them. Please don't make these bagels if you are kosher and you are are Jewish and you are practicing those laws within your belief and your culture because they do have real pork in them. However, you can make them with an alternative like turkey bacon, for instance. So I just want to go over all of those things with you guys to share. But uh, same with, you know, donuts and pizza. If you made the very first pizza crust, that I presume was made over in Italy. It could have been made in China because they, they actually were the ones that developed pasta. And um, Marco Polo brought that back over to Europe with him. They could have been the first people that developed pizza as well. I'm not gonna Google it. You don't need to share it. I'm just saying there are millions of recipes out there for pizza crust. There are millions of recipes out there for breads. There are millions of recipes for donuts, I'm sure. Just go to pin, pin, Pinterest and, and check it out sometime. So don't come after the people that are sharing recipes that they developed for you to share with you so you can have something you are missing like we do, okay? There's no reason to, and it just causes friction in the community. You guys, we need to stick together. We need to band together because everybody's body is different. What you can eat may not be what I can eat and vice versa. And I've always said, no keto police on our channel, please, because everyone is different. Your idea and interpretation of being carnivore is different than mine. 
and Harry's and what works for you because of your inflammation, your medical issues that you have are different than what work for me. So be kind to one another. Share tips and tricks with everybody. Take it or leave it if you don't want to, if you don't want to eat that or you don't want to go there with that because I have some friends that are Jewish that I have taken my um, recipes to and they love it. They are Jewish by race. Um, they have relatives in Ukraine that have fleed. They have relatives in Israel, but they are not kosher Jewish and they don't necessarily follow the faith and God's laws that were handed down to them. So I just want to share that with everybody. I just wanted to share. <laughs> anyway, you guys, here's another. We're all about food today. This is all about some crazy stuff. Okay. Just so you know, we found out recently that Denny's is no longer providing mustard to anybody. They are not buying it anymore. And if you remember, if you're a longtime viewer, I brought up the subject of there are going to be shortages going into 2023. And for sure, 2024, mustard, ketchup, sriracha sauce, hot sauces. Denny's is no longer going to have the green Tabasco sauce. They are not going to carry any sriracha sauce. All these things were where they are being grown. They're not getting their crops. Things happened with crops and everything else. So absolutely talk to the manager. Denny's is not providing mustard. Now, if enough of us say so, pardon me, if enough of us rise up and say, get us mustard, right, that may be a thing. But if you're like a lot of us are, take your purse, take a little igloo in with you, and now take your mustard if you're going to Denny's. Because Denny's used to be one of the places where you could go and get a really good carnivore, ketovore, keto meal by um, ordering off the Grand Slam menu, build your own hamburger menu and that, and it wasn't as costly as some of the other places out there where hamburgers are almost $20 now, at least in Phoenix, Arizona, where they raised the um, minimum wage way up, way up. I mean, they're hiring people starting at $14 an hour here for McDonald's. How can they provide a, a $1 meal when they're paying every single employee at least $14 an hour to start? There are signs up everywhere because we need help. So, wanted to share that. Another thing, I was watching um, a video on what foods, what misconceptions, and what foods are we refrigerating that absolutely not only do not need to be refrigerated, but do poorly in the refrigerator as, a, as opposed to either in a dry, cool cupboard or on the kitchen counter respectively. And I'm just going to give you a few because I was amazed at that. Do you know and why you see ketchup and mustard and hot sauces at the hamburger joint sitting out on the counter? Because all of those products do better not refrigerated ever. If you refrigerate them, they can cause mold inside. They have the vinegar based products all have a preservative vinegar is one of them and unless the bottle says must refrigerate after opening in some salsa cases not hot sauces you can leave them on the counter to, um, hot sauce tobacco sauce tabasco sauce like this healthy um so yes ketchup mustard you know you need to read yours because we are keto there may be something that's a little bit different um, as far as what they use in it also, don't put your pickles in the refrigerator. Pickles are on the shelf and they need to go in your cupboard. They do just fine for over a year in your cupboard even though you've already opened them because of the brine. Now, if you want a pickle and you want it cold, just put it, take one out, put it in a little bowl and leave it in there for about an hour. Fruits and vegetables I was amazed at. I kind of knew but forgot. Don't refrigerate your whole onions. Don't refrigerate cucumbers. Don't refrigerate tomatoes. Now I'm talking the whole from the grocery store fruits and vegetables when I mention those and garlic. 
once you've chopped them and you need to save them, that's a different story, but you need to eat them within 24 to 48 hours, like your tomatoes and your cucumbers. Otherwise, leave them out on the counter, okay? Now, if you have a mixed family that is doing um, the SAD diet or a regular diet or whatever diet that's not keto and you're providing them apples, don't put apples in the refrigerator. Apples crisp up and stay better on the counter, maybe in a colander or something where they get air. If you put them in the refrigerator, they get soggy and woody, wood ashy. Plus, they will ripen any other, uh, they produce a gas and they will ripen any other fruits you have in there. Do not store oranges or any citrus, orange, limes, and lemons on the counter. Once you cut open any of these things, of course, you need to preserve them, but use them right away. So you need to put them in the refrigerator for, for one and a half to two days, but you need to use them because tomatoes will stay sweet, juicy and delicious on the counter as, and actually they last a little longer than if you put them in the refrigerator. They get um, waterlogged and their flavor goes, the sweetness comes out of them if you leave them in the refrigerator. Another fruit is avocados. Did you guys know that avocados don't ripen fully on the tree and you can leave them on your tree for 60, 90, 100 days? Now, if you buy a big thing of avocados, you can refrigerate them, but they will not ripen as quickly as if you want one and you put it on the counter, right? So if you want them to ripen, you put them on the counter, you put some in the refrigerator. When you want one ripen, you take it out the night before or two days prior, depending on how firm and hard they are, and leave them out on the counter. Whole garlic, just leave them out. Peppers of any kind, hot, spicy, mild peppers on the counter. Don't refrigerate them unless you've cooked something with them, even a bell pepper. Once you do that, you need to eat them within one to two days max or chop them up, put them in the freezer. Same with onions. They can mold very easily in the refrigerator and I thought that was really an odd thing, but this came like, this was like the FDA guidelines we were watching, weren't we, Harry? Yep. So it was quite interesting on all those things because I never thought, it's like the fruits and vegetables that aren't refrigerated that are out in the middle of the aisle, like the tomatoes, the cucumbers, and those things can go on the counter or in a pantry, in a, in a dry, cool spot, right? As opposed. So just read your labels. If it doesn't mention refrigerate after opening, don't refrigerate it. Keep it out, you know, and, and use it and enjoy it. So I just wanted to share all those things with everybody. And you guys, ah, Harry needs to get well. And we're gonna do what it takes to get him well. And if he needs to be in bed getting well, we may or may not have to grab something, replay it forward for people who are not and have not seen some of the older videos where I did a lot of cooking in the carnivore text. And Somebody got mad because I went over my $50 budget making the bagels. No, I did not. <laughs> because I didn't make any bagels. I have no bagels. I didn't eat any bagels. Right. So, and I could make those bagels with everything I have in my cupboard now. So, just sharing that with everybody. We are sticking tried and true to what we have in our budget. With the exception of, like I said, the two sardines take $2 out. Put it, put it in a purse somewhere. So, you guys... I'm trying to help teach and share that ketovore, keto can be done and low carb can be done on a budget. Using what you have in your cupboards already or purchasing it new every single week. And I hope that helps everybody. Harry and I stayed home and we watched, we binge watched the Mission Impossible Tom Cruise videos. Um, all I took yet. out steak, defrosted it, threw it in the air fryer, and then we sat and per we ate the bacon all gone this weekend. So we, we have, uh, that was one and a half pounds of bacon because I still have the other pound in there. And I've got my hamburger and stuff. So you guys... I just want to share that information with everybody. And if you have questions, please leave me a comment. If you guys see someone commenting, please 
don't stress over the comment. You can try to help them along by giving them uh, directional information or the correct information. But if they persist, just let it go. Let it roll off your back. Let it roll off your shoulders like rain because it's not worth it. And let me come back and address it with somebody um, because I just, we have a great community and I just want to keep it that way. And people have to understand, don't be a keto police. If it's not something you believe in or you want to participate in, don't. But if, if you want to learn and understand and choose that information, every book I read, I don't do 100% of every single thing the book says or every single doctor, Dr. Chappie, Dr. Ken Berry, Dr. Um, Hilt, you know, all the, Dr. Eric Berg, Dr. Eric Westman, all the, do Dr. Mindy. Doctor. 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 And doctor. I could go on and on because we watch all of them. We don't have cable TV. My life is going to YouTube and looking at all the information, gleaning the information, sitting down watching a movie or, or a series with Harry, and then going to bed. That's basically our, our TV views. So, you guys, be kind to one another. Share the information. Get people out there. Open their eyes to the possibility of a low-carb, a ketogenic, a ketovore, and a carnivore diet lifestyle to heal themselves from within. Anyway, you guys, we'll see you in the next segment. Yes, indeed. One other thing I forgot to mention, salad dressings. Anything that has dairy in it needs to be refrigerated. Those that don't like an olive vinaigrette, olive oil, probably can sit out on a counter or in a cupboard too. Again, read the refrigerate. Now I'm worried because you guys, I have so much stuff I've been refrigerating. I've got my hot sauces. I've got my mustards. You know, I've got my pickles and stuff back here taking up space. So here's what I think I'm going to do because they've already been in my refrigerator. As I bring new products out I'm not restocking the refrigerator oh, that's a good idea. with those things the mustards the hot sauces the tobacco sauces the pickles etc but the stuff that's already in there I'm leaving and using it until it's all gone or I need to throw it away because I that means as many condiments as I use I'm gonna have to put them somewhere in a cupboard and I don't have one yet to use. So just sharing the information I saw, you guys can Google it. There's a whole list by from the FDA that you, what, what foods can be opened, utilized, shelf stable versus having to be refrigerated. And that's fruits, vegetables, and bottled and packaged items. So anyway, Harry and I talked, he would like some hard boiled eggs that he can grab and go with all these medicines that he is taking now, you guys. It's crazy and it's not good for his digestion either. So I'm going to make some, and here's another thing. Yes, a skillet is wonderful to cook um, hamburger in. I have all different sizes of skillets. This little pan I love for hamburger because of the lid. Because the lid is a pasta, it's a pasta pan and it's got holes. Now, Several people have made mention to me not to drain the hamburger meat because the fat to meat ratio, let's say I'm doing 80-20. Well, when I'm calculating that into my macros, let's say you're doing a high fat diet. If you drain off the fat, it actually becomes a less of a high fat meat and it's less fat. So they suggested to us to leave the fat in the pan and store it and eat the the fat with the meat. So I'm doing that today. Now, because I'm doing that, I think what I'll do is I will get a different pan out since I'm not gonna drain it. I have more surface space in this big pan. I'm just gonna cook my hamburger meat in here. We're gonna cool it off and we're gonna eat it with the bacon grease as well in there. I have an Instapot, you guys know that. I have a pressure cooker. I like cooking my eggs in a pan. I just do, it's, it works for me. Um, it's easy peasy and I've been doing that my whole life. So 
you know, I don't need another gadget. I don't need an egg thing. I, I have no room for any little gadget or appliance that cooks just eggs. So I do not have a problem cooking my eggs in plain ordinary tap water and then just getting them peeled and put away or not peeled and put away in the refrigerator until I want them. One thing I do do though, because salt actually makes the water boil hotter, I do put about a teaspoon of salt in my water. I'm gonna get the water in the pan, just regular old water from the tap. Cover my eggs, put it on the stove, and let them boil. Once the water starts boiling, I turn on my um, timer. Do I want them soft boiled? Do I want them hard boiled? And I'll put them on for like seven minutes for hard boiled, five minutes for soft boiled, etc. I'm gonna put these in the fridge. And I am going to make Harry hamburger that he can eat ground because every single pill he has, he has to take at different times. One's four, every four hours. One is three times a day. One is twice a day. Three That's times exactly a day, twice it. a day. Yes. Yeah. So he has to eat with every single one of the pills. So I'm making him ground hamburger that he can come in, nuke it in the microwave for a few seconds, get it warm enough, sit down, have a few scoops of hamburger. So he can't do an OMAD, a two mad, not even a three mad during all of this nope. because of his pills that he has to take. So I just wanted to share that. Oh. Did I say that we stayed home and we had steak yesterday? I think I did. I'm so glad I got all that tri-tip steak because it's been awesome. And you guys, air fryers are fabulous. Somebody asked me what's the difference between air frying and oven baking. Well, air fryer is super easy because you can take frozen food, throw it right in there. It will not only unthaw it so you can break it apart like in a couple of minutes, like steak or meat or chicken wings or anything like that, but it allows you to keep it in the freezer until you're ready to eat it. So that's something that's really cool. Plus it crisps it up nicely. That what I don't like about an air fryer is I can't get a family package of chicken in it all at once. And this is a big one. So if I'm gonna do a whole, this is my meat I bought to go. This whole huge thing of chicken thighs. I'll do it in the oven because I want to do it all at once, not in batches in my air fryer. And then I just have, then I just have a container of it in the refrigerator to heat up as I go. You can heat it up in the, micro, in the microwave or you can heat it up and crisp it up back in the air fryer. You can do a whole bunch of hamburgers in the oven too as opposed to doing them a little bit at a time if you have a large family that you're cooking for. So those are the differences. I think they both crisp the same. I think they taste the same. To me, they do. So it's just a different way of cooking. So I just wanted to share that with everybody. I'm going to put my Beautiful. I'm gonna do one pound like that. Get my spatulator going, get this. Um, we do not add seasoning or salt when we are cooking it because of Sally. Um, she has her own diet that she's doing very well on. She's thriving with. We um, just started adding back the few little kibble that she gets for a treat and she's doing good so far. So I'm going to keep that there. I'm going to put this in my tulip. I'll put my tulip over here. It's beautiful. My one and only little flower for Mother's Day. And um, did you guys all have a good Mother's Day? Did you guys get to rest and relax? Actually, it was really nice with Harry and I just relaxing and enjoying each other's company in between Harry's naps. Right, dear? Yep. Well, they're created by the pills. The pills make you, uh, make me tired. Do you want big hamburgers or littler ones? Oh, uh, whichever you want to make. I, I'll eat whatever you got. 
doesn't matter to me, just as long as I can take them with a pill, you know? Half of one. Um, here, if you let's... make big ones, they'll be like half of one with a pill. Yeah, no, let's just make three nice sized ones. I'm going to take some of this meat. There. Okay, you guys. I'm going to make this one handed while this is all going. So, you guys, I'm going to put these patties in my air fryer, cook them, and have them ready to go. I'm going to fix this and get my eggs going. So, you guys, come back on the next segment when it's all done. Yes, indeed. Eggs are done. Clear. Okay. Got my eggs. Got an egg. You guys. I don't know about you guys, but when we grew up, my mom did not know what an ice water bath was. Number one, our refrigerator did not have an ice maker. They didn't make them when I was a kid growing up. We had a little thing of a, a metal ice cube tray that you couldn't overfill because if you did, you wouldn't be able to pull the little handle that knocked them crazy and you'd end up putting them under hot water because our refrigerator also was not a one that would auto defrost. So every quarter we'd take everything out, chip the big ice off, defrost it, put towels all around it. So we're very spoiled in that respect now. But I've got an ice bath, these cooked. Now I'm just gonna uh, drain them out in my big... I just lean them up against my Side of the sink. sink. Side of the sink. And in they go. Yes, they do. And I will wash this when it gets cool. So, yep, pop them in, pop them down, get them in the ice water, let them chill, literally. That stops the cooking process. My mom, we always were taught, pour the hot water out, put the eggs in a colander and rinse them with hot water or put them in a bowl of cold water from the sink. So many people were on well water and the well water was pretty dang cold to begin with. So that's what we did growing up. So I've got my hamburger all done right here and I'm leaving the grease in. I'm letting it cool down. We're gonna store it with the grease included and eat it that way. Let me take a look at my hamburgers. I'm gonna take these out. Did I wash that? No. It wasn't washed, huh? No, because we had steaks in there. Oh, okay. So that grease and stuff from the delicious um, steaks just made it taste delicious. If you have, pe you know, every couple days you can clean it. If you're only cooking hamburgers or whatever, the grease, the tallow, it's the meat parts. Just take a, a napkin like I do and I just go and pick out all the big pieces when it's cool and then just leave the tallow in there for one or two days. And then I look underneath by lifting that up and if there's too much, then we just clean it and start all over again. But a couple of days, you're getting that delicious tallow back up in your hamburgers. It's the meat that goes rancid whenever you pour bacon into a container. If you can, the more you can strain it and get the pieces of meat out, you're not going you're going to be able to keep that on the counter for a year. It's when you get the pieces of bacon or the pieces of meat in it that you need to clean it totally and 100%. But I usually yesterday I cooked steaks, it looked pretty good to me. I made hamburgers. So tonight I may wipe this all out and start again tomorrow and then keep that for the next day and so forth and so on. It's like if you have bacon grease in a big frying pan, you can leave that bacon grease in there if you're cooking eggs or something as long as there's no bits and pieces of food in it. It's good to go the next day or just wipe it out, right? and leave the bacon green that settles on the sides and stuff that's pure bacon fat in there until the next day. That's what I do, don't come after me. If you guys are super clean and you wanna clean it out 100% every single time, you go for it. But this is what I do and I've been doing that since I was a kid and I'm 69 years old. So I think, I think, I think I've done a pretty good job. I'm gonna let this all set up and get cool, but basically that's what we've got. We've got eggs over here that Harry can grab and peel. I've got ground hamburger that I can use in meals and I've got a couple of hamburger patties that we can have. I have a whole nother thing of uh, three pounds of hamburger in my refrigerator for when we um, 
run out and I've got my chicken in there as well. So we've got all of our food that I bought to go in our Vita for camping back in here. Did not bring anything else in, didn't take anything else out. That's what we bought with our $50 each grocery shopping. Anyway, you guys, I think I'm gonna go ahead and close out because I'm just gonna be putting these away. And if Harry wants something, which he does, he's gonna have some hamburger and maybe I'll throw a couple eggs in. But I hope you guys uh, found it quite interesting on the information of some foods that need to be out in a shelf, shelf, shelf stable as opposed to in your refrigerator. If you have a smaller refrigerator, that really helps. If you don't have the shelf room like I do, sometimes storing it in the refrigerator is better. But either way, you guys can check that out. You can Google it and find the list for yourself. You guys if you have not done so already and you are new to my channel I hope that you would subscribe I hope you would like subscribe ring the little bell so you get notified every time we upload a new video for your enjoyment you guys Which don't forget like to, every day it is don't forget to give us the thumbs up and we'll see you right here tomorrow good night everyone you can say good night Good night. That was cute. That was good. Yes. We got it. Still get you some chicken. You got your chicken and rice and everything nice. Yes, indeed. Here you go. Get some chicken. Here you go. Yeah, I know it's not carnivore dog yet, honey. We're slowly bringing you back. There you go. No airplane ride today, balloon ride, or anything, huh? Well, you are out of it. Okay. Good night, everyone.